Hey guys, so um, today I'm going to give you a look at the all new Vexed Bottom Sack. You would have seen these things on our YouTube channel before. Um, they're a new product, it's something pretty cool, it's something pretty innovative. And um, we've got Willie from Vexed here today to give you a bit of a bit of a rundown on the sack and how you can get your sack emptied on a big Jewfish. So, here we go. Hey guys, so Luke's asked me to come down to talk about the new Vex bottom sack and just a bit about um, you know what it's for and where the idea came from. So basically the idea came to me about 10 years ago when I was bait casting a pilchard off the reef um, up at S Bend which is sort of just this side of Geraldton. Now I was casting a, a um, pilchard out off the reef trying to catch a, a jewfish and I couldn't see where my pilchard was. But I knew where it was because there was a big swarm of bait fish or reef fish like wrasse and tarwine and all those little shitty fish that, that tap your, your bait until it falls off the hooks. And basically when I was winding that pillion, in I could see that big swarm of, um, of reef fish around it. Now probably about 20 casts in just before the sun went down I saw all these little reef fish disperse and then bang I was on and I actually got a 10.5 kilo jewfish off the reef. So basically the vision, did that fish see the, the pilchard or did the fish see the big ball of reef fish? Uh, I reckon that's what drew him in, that, that's what drew him in close and he was going to eat one of those bait, bait fish and they actually dispersed and he swallowed the bait. So basically years on I thought well you know when you're drifting, if you hit the lump uh, and you go right over the top of it um, or you miss the lump, if there's a, a fish sort of 20, 30, 40 metres um, to either side, um, can he see the bait, can he see the jig, or can he smell the bait of the jig? I don't reckon he will be able to. I reckon his, his sight is limited to maybe 20 or 15 metres, depending on the water, um, the, the clarity of the water. So basically, with this full of chopped up bait like that, okay, if you fill up a bottom sack full of that, that's going to attract a lot of reef fish and little pickers to here. It's also going to make a lot of smell, uh, a lot of oil, a lot of blood, um, and it's going to, there's going to be scales and all sorts ha uh, coming out of it. It's going to be pretty much like a fishy pinata. The more the fish hit it, the little fish, the more stuff that's going to come out of it. So my vision was, if that's cruising along just off the bottom, um, and there's got a ball of bait fish there, and there's a, a jewfish or a snapper or a coral trout or a red emperor, 20 metres away, he can see the big ball of reef fish, he'll come over, belt him out of the way and then take it. Now, this is not just designed for fish with big mouths. So a pink snapper will be hitting this and basically it will think that that's a little piece of um, pilchard or, um, or, a, or a burly pallet or a, a little bit of octopus that's fallen out of it and it'll actually eat the hooks and get hooked up. And there's another hook in there as well, so if he hits the tentacles, which has got a cool swimming action, um, he'll actually get hooked up on there. So you don't need to put bait on, on these. Uh, basically the fish will be eating those anyway because of that flash on there, or they'll be actually hitting that. If it's a big fish with a big mouth, he'll come, knock out the little ones, and then basically swallow the lot. Alright guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we actually stuff these bottom sacks with. Um, and, and how to how to actually stuff them. Now, if you've seen any of Luke's um, YouTube videos, you'd see the Jared, the sack ambassador. Now, he actually took them out and, and he tried a few different things. He actually stuffed them with um, kitty cat or whiskers or, or cat food. So he, uh, rather than chopping up pilchards or fish or squid, he actually filled it up with cat food because that's what he had in the uh, in the um, in the cupboard at the time. And he actually did another one with burly pellets and crayfish. So these ones here, I've stuffed with squid guts. So basically, when I've caught my I squid the last time I went fishing. I kept all the um, all the guts. I just threw the um, you know the feather plastic plasticky thing away, and I've kept all the guts in a bag. And then um, watching the footy one night, I got me a little teaspoon out, and I stuffed a few of these squid. And what I'll do is I'll actually put them into a cryvac bag. I'll pop them in there and I'll cry back them. So when I want to go out fishing, I don't have to fluff around um, fingering muleys into a, a sack. I'll just get my head all ready. Okay, it's got the split ring on. And while uh, Luke will be hung over like the numpty he is, he'll be um, fluffing around tying a rig or trying to stuff his squid. I'll just split ring that straight on, which I'll show you how to do. Here's me trusty split ring pliers. I'll split ring. Okay, get your sack. Whack that on. It's as easy as that. Basically your sack is filled, um, it's bleeding, it's got squid guts, I've got a, a sink, uh, a squid ink tube in there from when I gathered the squid as well, so that's going to come out. This will be coming down, uh, all of that's coming out, fish are hitting it and they're just going to get absolutely railed on those 
super sharp little harbour hooks down the bottom there. Now, when this gets to the bottom, you don't jig it. Just let it get to the bottom. Let the fish do their work. Don't pull it away from them. They'll be hitting that. The more they hit it, the more crap's going to come out of it. So you just want to let them do that, and they'll either get naturally hooked on there while they're doing it, or they'll eat that, um, uh, or the big one will come and swallow the whole lot. Now, to get this down, the other idea of, of this type of Jew bomb head, this will get to the bottom nice and quickly with a nice light outfit. You don't need a, a dirty big trolling outfit with 80 pound braid like an overhead, like old school stuff. You have new school stuff. A nice PE 2 to 3 or 2 to 4 um, slow pitch outfit, okay, that you can hang on to all day. Um, you, you can do a bit of jigging, plasticking with it. Then you can put a bait on or a bottom sack or a, you can switch over to a, to a bottom meat, whatever. This sort of outfit, this is the future. This is new school tackle, okay? Nice and light and so much more fun to use this gear. You can get your um, jigs to the bottom a lot easier with PE 2 or 3 um, and you hook more fish on light gear. It's as simple as that. So that's the idea of this technique uh, and this new sack idea. Really, we want to... Everybody wants to see you stuff that sack. Well, it's, stuffing the sack's not all that easy. Okay, I do get pricked from time to time, so I often do it with, without the hooks on. I'll just put the split rings on. But I'll just show you one. Say if you got that out and you're ready to go. Here's some bait I've chopped up. So you can either use bait shred. I've just chopped up a bit of fish fillet with a bit of pilly. So there's oil and there's something that'll actually stay in there that's nice and hard. But again, snappy tom, whiskers, um, uh, fish uh, burly pellets, all that sort of stuff. Um, but use your imagination. We don't even know what the best stuff is. It's just um, it's just trial and error, really. So basically, you just roll the sack back, okay? Expose the head of the squid, and you can pull that back, and it'll get caught on those two little hooks there. So once it's over there like that, see, she's not going anywhere. Okay, now, this part here, you basically just do the old open it up. I'll show you how far she'll open. There you go. Hallelujah, that opens right up so you can you can get it in. Now normally I'll get a teaspoon um, and just get all of that stuff in there using a teaspoon. There's a few other techniques you can get it in, but what I do is I start off with a few um, bigger ones at, at the start. And it, ho it helps actually push the sack up and stay up there like that. Sometimes if it's really fast drift, you need a little bit of a cable tied to, to actually um, hitch that and secure it there, but on, on normal fishing conditions, you don't. Okay, so basically just whack a couple of chunky bits in. So you can just get bits about that size, I reckon. Some guys shred it up even more, and or they buy that shredded bait shred, the Shore Catch Bait Shred, uh, S-H-O-R-E Catch. Um, and then look at that, a stinking little... Um, pilchard, um, like it's got all the guts, the head and all that sort of stuff in there as well. So basically you can just fill it up as much as you want. You don't need to fill it all the way. Um, again, a teaspoon's much easier to do this, but just keep thumbing it in. Just keep thumbing it in like that. Okay, once your sack's full, um, basically you've got to push, you can, you can just fish it like that. That's a semi-fast release. So what that'll come off, that'll come out of the sack a little bit quicker. Or you can just grab the hook there, just be careful of your fingers. I've been um, nailed a few times, but you just pull that off the hooks, uh, off the split ring, as soon as it goes over. I've designed these sacks with a little ridge in there, so you can actually thumb that in, and it'll get stuck around that little ridge inside, and then she becomes very, very lifelike. Now, in the water, all these little legs are going crazy in the water. I've designed these to swim, so these ones are stuck together at the moment, but they're very, very stretchy. So that there will hold up to about 250 grams. Now there you go. So this was the first trial. We caught fish on this really well, but we found when it was rough, the longer hooks were catching a little bit. So I'd probably recommend um, slightly shorter hooks like this. Either way, the fish are gonna get hooked on there. So basically, once the sack empties, you can just pull the, um, the Oki back out and just reload your sack again. Or you can actually just load up a few of these, like I said before, um, and then freeze them into a cryovac, and then they're ready to roll. Now you can get the replacement sack, like this. So that's your replacement sack. So you can buy a few of them and fill them up if you want. Or um, This is very, very stretchy, strong material, but leather jackets still do poke holes in them, uh, as they do with everything, um, depending on where you're fishing. We don't get many on the west coast, but over east, I'm sure the leatheries would sort these out good and proper. So there's your replacement sack. 
and that's the the done deal that's the the whole thing ready to roll you just got to choose your hooks split ring them on and you're away and fishing these things are also available they start at a 110 gram 150 200 250 and a 300 the size of the sack changes so depending on the depth of the water and the size of the fish you just pick the sack that you want but um, you can also change your, your heads if you've already got heads at home change your heads over via the split ring but um, yeah just pick whatever size sack you want and then yeah fill it and, and drop it down this is the last thing I'll show you this is another idea that um, one of the users have, has come up with he wanted more burly to come out so he did away with the oki that actually fits in to make it into a squid and this is his fast sack release he calls it so he fills that up with um, with chopped up fish and he puts a, a wad in the end like a big lump of bread or a piece of fish fillet to actually keep it in there so when it starts to rock it down can you imagine that it gets halfway down and when it gets near the bottom the fish start hitting it and that'll just the wad will the blob will release and then it'll just feed those bottom hit hooks so basically those bottom hooks there a nice little thin strip of bait on there or you don't even need bait because the fish thinks it's the the Haley's Comet that's coming out of there and it'll actually grab that and get um, absolutely screwed up on those uh, sharp little harbour hooks there so that's your fast release sack if you do do it this way you need a split ring on there otherwise you might lose your sack off the back it'll actually um, I've designed them to actually have a hook there so if you don't put a split ring there you might lose your sack down down the line so basically just put a little split ring on there or you can just put a cable tie around or whatever just to keep it in place but that's just an idea one of the, um, the, the end users came up um, with his um, fiddling around with his sack I guess right guys that's the new Vex bottom sack you can check them out in store, we've got them online, um, get out, give them a shot, it's good fun, it's something new, go and try them, catch some fish on them, see you out there.